Hey there everyone, it's really good to see you back. Welcome back to my channel and today I've got a, a review of a product because I've been thinking about what sort of things it'd be good to buy in the run-up for Christmas for friends and relatives who are into model railways, particularly the younger generation. And I think I've found the perfect gift. So without further ado, let's go take a look. <laughs> Hornby have been very, very kind to send over the new Harry Potter themed Hogwarts Express. And for me, uh, when I saw this announced, it's one of the uh, franchises that Hornby has uh, got the rights to in the UK. And uh, I was quite intrigued by this. Now, I've looked around online and asked a few people what their thoughts on the Harry Potter sets were. And it was interesting that a lot of them commented that they'd felt uh, in the past that the locomotive had been a bit kind kind of railroady. So I was really interested to see how this new offering stacks up. And actually, I've been pleasantly surprised. First up, it comes in this lovely presentation box and uh, it's got some of the imagery from the film, but with the actual model visible on the front. And what you see is what you're going to be getting. And you can already see that actually this appears to be the uh, full super detail. Uh, I believe it's a Hall class locomotive, even though it's uh, in the guise of Hogwarts Castle. And uh, I'm just going to turn this box over before we get into it, because there's a few extra bits and pieces here that I just wanted to bring to your attention. And it's something that uh, when Hornby sent this over, they also uh, mentioned that uh, they've got all these other things in their range. And they're all depicted here on the back. So you can expand and this. Um, so we've got here the platform nine and three quarters, Hogsmeade station building, uh, Hogsmeade general office. And a lot of these are items that are already in the Scaledale range. And uh, I've looked at quite a few of the Scaledale items in the past, and they're all really, really good, high quality. So you can build up a pretty nice looking uh, model railway, uh, which is all themed to the Harry Potter. There's also extra coaches available and I have checked these are with different running numbers to the coaches that are in this set so you can make yourself up a four coach train where all the coaches are different and the locomotive itself is available separately uh, with a TTS sound chip and now I'm going to delve into the DCC fitting of this um, as we go through this video but you can buy it separately factory fitted but one of the things that struck me is that is in effect the same locomotive that's in this set set. And I'm really interested to see whether Hornby actually expand this range. And I could see there being certainly a market for a themed goods set, maybe using their J50 locomotive or something like their 42XX tank locomotive, painted up in the same maroon livery that you see here, but with some themed wagons, maybe for Nimbus brooms or you know, the such like, that would make it a really good addition to this. So Simon Kohler, if you're watching this, take note. I'm I'm sure you've probably already got this well in hand, but it's something which I think would really complement this set. Also, one of the things that Zoe says that should be really excited as a tie-in with these ranges is maybe a Hogwarts castle in the Airfix range that can be bought as a kit and built and painted and finished to, again, complement this set. There are so many possibilities for this that actually it's quite an exciting movie tie-in. And if you speak to any any younger child, in fact actually some of the older children as well, I'm talking here about people in their 20s and 30s, the Harry Potter franchise is huge. There's a reason this is probably one of the biggest franchises that we've ever seen, probably bigger even than Star Wars, and I know there's a few people shouting sacrilege at that, but there's a lot more people saying, 
yeah, actually, that's probably right, nodding their heads. So this is actually a genius decision by Hornby. So we've got a catalogue number, R1234, and that's actually really easy to remember. Again, probably a really good marketing idea from Hornby. Let's give it a an R number, a catalogue number, that even a small child can remember what they're asking for for Christmas. So R1234. Um, and uh, right, let's get into this box now. It's uh, reasonably easy to open and just slide out the inner tray. So, and one of the things here as well, actually, we've seen a move away from plastic packaging of late, and it's really good to see that Hornby's uh, done this in this sort of recycled cardboard pressed in a liner. So we're seeing a real minimum of plastic packaging. On top, we've got the uh, track mat and instruction leaflet pack, and I believe that this actually includes the track mat that you can lay out on the table that uh, gives you exactly where to lay the track and gives you that basis for for a scenic element that you can then add to. And uh, I would expect that there's a placing on this map for all of those peripherals that we just talked about that are visible in the pictures on the back of the box. So yeah, as you can see there, it says it's a hall class locomotive. And of course, um, the uh, full size locomotive that was used in the movies uh, was a hall class. And I believe I've got a photograph somewhere that I took of it quite a few years ago, actually now at a crew open day. So um, um, it's probably a good money spinner for a lot of preserved lines, having the full-size locomotive, and then tie in with that. It'd be nice uh, that the you know the, the shops at the preserved lines would have sets such as this available for people to buy. I think you know this is just such a great tie-in. So looking in here, we've got everything that you need to set up and get running. So we've got um, the fairly basic beginner level Hornby DC controller, and these are actually um, pretty reliable. We've got the, uh, as a friend of mine uh, <laughs> very affectionately calls them, the wall wart, to plug into all of this to make it run. All bish bash bosh, um, no real issues there. Just looking, what else have we got? We've got a little detail pack for the locomotive, so we've got a front coupling if you need to apply it, and we've also got these drain cocks, which I think these are more to do with the fact that the basis of this is the Hall class locomotive, but it is a full super detailed locomotive. Also down here is one of Hornby's uh, buffer stops, because as you've probably already seen, in amongst the track there, we've got a point so that we can have a uh, single siding off the main loop. And as any kid will tell you, a siding gives an awful lot of play value to any set. So uh, we've also got the terminal rail there with a very, very simple push down, push the wire in, and then it just clamps itself spring loaded. So pretty easy to set up. Another interesting thing here is actually, I had thought that you might need to use your own cable, but Hornby's got you covered. And I actually really like this plug that's on the end of the cable from the controller. And uh, if we look here, you just push down, plug in, and then it, it grips that fairly well. So it couldn't be easier to get this set up. Even small hands can get this um, up and running on the kitchen table. And uh, it really is a lot of thought gone into this. I'll just try and slip that back into its, uh, and down into there. The other thing, which again, I think this is a lot of thought has gone into this by Hornby. They have included one of their uh, railers. And the whole point behind this, if I move this track out and get to a straight length, it's down here at the bottom. This just clips onto the track and then you run the coaches and the locomotive down, just push them on and they end up perfectly on the track first time every time. And that is a real boon for younger people and older ones as well, but predominantly younger people trying to play with this set. There's no frustration of trying to get all this, these wheels onto the track. So I think that that is a really thoughtful addition from Hornby that is gonna make things a lot, lot easier for uh, younger hands to uh, get this up and running as quickly and frustration free as possible. It comes with a full circuit of track. We've also got that point in there as well. And it's quite a big circuit. Um, these are, I think these are double 
curves so essentially it's the minimum number of uh, pieces of track to get your full circuit up and running. And let's get to the main feature, this is the locomotive, in fact I'm going to get the locomotive and the coaches out and then we're going to look at them separately because of course they are the main feature of this set. So let's get the whole class and the coaches you'll see are in here just in tissue paper Again, minimising the amount of plastic packaging and also just making it fairly easy to get these in and out. So I'm just going to get these out, put the box to one side and then we can have a good close, close look at these. Right, first things first, we've got the stuff out of the packaging and you can see here instantly, I mean just a cursory glance at the locomotive tells you that this is not a railroad model. This shows just how much a pride Hornby have taken with this set, that this is suitable not just for younger play hands, but also, for example, don't write this set off. Um, this could be part of a an older collector's set. For example, you know, granddad could have this, so when the grandchildren's come round, when uh, nieces and nephews come round, they've got something that they can run that will entertain the younger generation visiting. So it's not just something that's aimed at little Jimmy's first model railway for Christmas. This is something that even older collectors can appreciate and it wouldn't look out of place on their, their big uh, model railway. What we've actually got here is a haul class, super detail haul class. Um, it is really nice. I'm looking at the detail here and we've got everything that you would expect from a super detail model. So you can see that it's all there. There is no corners cut for this locomotive. We've got these, uh, they do feel to be, I think they're etched metal nameplates. We've got correctly on there, Hogwarts Castle, which um, the actual full-size locomotive, I believe is Ollerton Hall. So it isn't actually a castle class locomotive in the film. So the model is accurate to that. And I really like that attention to detail. You know, it's little touches like that which in my view mean that this set will appeal not just to um, smaller children, not just to families looking for a nice fun themed model railway to be the first model railway in that household, but also the serious collector can buy this and actually be happy that they're getting a quality model and not just being fobbed off with some kind of cheap cash in. This is as far from cheap cash in as you can get. Other things on here, we've got uh, really fine metal handrails, as you'd expect, but really nicely done and quite robust as well. It's something I'm always really big on is that these locomotives, these models need to stand up to uh, handling. You know, you, what you don't want is bits to just fall off because that would put off a lot of the newcomers to the hobby and, you know, parents would really not look favourably on a model that just little Jimmy had bits just fall off in their hands. So this is actually a pretty robust model. The valve gear and the connecting rods, again, this is an area that Hornby really do excel in. And they're all pretty accurate, we've got the right shape, we've got the right fluting. I'm particularly impressed by this crosshead detail with the piston and the slide. It's really fine and it's a, a cast metal on there. So it's not going to wear, pop out so readily. You know, there's a lot of mileage can be run with this locomotive, which is really good to see. The rest of the detail, we've got daylight underneath the boiler. Uh, we've got all the other details with pipe work and other bits and pieces all accurately represented in there. Looking down from the top, we've also got our um, safety bonnet on there, very characteristic Great Western design. And uh, it's all in there, all the detail. And again, quite robust. The whistle it appears to be a separate... Uh, I think it's plastic, but it certainly looks the part in there. And uh, looking to the other side, again, all the detail is present and correct. Looking on the underside, the brake rigging is all factory applied. And I know I've said this with other models that I've reviewed, that um, these always used to be a bit of a pain to put in when they were just in the detail pack. So it's nice to see that they're being factory applied because it's just one less thing to have to mess about with. 
The front bogey as well, we've got that centre pivot which is prototypically accurate and as I said in the A4 Pacific review and the Princess Coronation review, it does make a big difference to how the model sort of puts itself on the track. When it goes through the corners, the grace with which it follows that curve looks so much better with the, the, the centre uh, pivot on this pickup truck and you can see there's a lot of movement so it does take care of slightly unevenly laid track. Moving to the tender again brake rigging all applied in there we've got the water scoop represented in there and it's got uh, pickup from all of the tender wheels as well as the locomotive wheels and you can see there we've got the cables going across to the plug and the thing that Hornby do so well which I'm really pleased to see them having brought to the market is proper tender drawbar which doesn't just come off and then put strain on that cable and it's what you want you don't want a model that is going to be prone to getting damaged because that doesn't do anybody any favors it actually puts people off the hobby and this has got you covered in terms of other detail we've got the color is just right the lining is crisp clear and it doesn't look at all fuzzy to me the uh, locomotive number on the cab side again nice crisp tampo printed and on the tender the hogwarts railways uh, logo there kind of modeled after the british rail uh, uh, lake crest is really nicely done and the detail on there the more you magnify on it the, the more it gives there and you know for what is ostensibly being sold kind of as a children's toy that is really really great to see this level of detail and attention on the top of the tender we've got this coal load and it's something again that Hornby do really well it is plastic but it's a really good representation of coal gone are the days where we'd have this kind of weird lumpy bumpy mess that was kind of a, a rough suggestion of coal if coal looked like plastic you don't get that with this it actually does look like coal and even down to the humps uh, from how the real locomotives tender would get loaded from a coaling point it's really nice to see on the back we've got uh, again more nice detail vacuum pipe is factory fitted the buffers aren't sprung but it's not really a big deal for me and we've got a coupling there in a NEM pocket so you can swap that out for anything else that you want. On the front uh, there is a detail bag uh, in the, the box which does give you that extra coupling but it comes as standard with just the NEM pocket there ready to accept it but uh, um, you, know, you don't have to apply it if you don't want to. On the front of the locomotive, we've got this wonderful, again, factory applied and actually quite robust. I think it's plastic, but it is robust uh, nameplate. And it really just shows that this is a nicely finished package. And uh, pretty much everything you see here is, is really, really nicely done. I'm so pleased to see that uh, this is the full fat locomotive. And actually, between you and me, I had been toying with giving this to my little nephew after the review, but you know what, it's really nice. Uh, I kind of want to keep it. It does hold its own running on uh, my model railway upstairs. And um, you know, it is a beautiful locomotive. Inside the tender, we've got the full uh, fittings for a TTS sound chip if you really want to put it in. Indeed, Hornby do offer a version of this as a standalone locomotive, which comes factory fitted with the TTS sound. And there's an 8-pin decoder socket in the tender. One little bit which um, wasn't quite up to the standard that I've seen from some locomotives from Hornby is that the back head detail in the cab, it doesn't have any of that separate tampo printing finish that uh, we saw on things like the Miles Beaver model. But again, it's not really a deal clencher for me. Um, it's nice when it's there, but I don't think it detracts enough from the locomotive to really mark it down too heavily for that. So we've got the first of the two coaches here to take a close look at and it is really nicely done. It's a BSK from the Hornby range and the Hornby Mark 1 is actually a really good model. We've reviewed some of these before um, in the Mark 1 uh, BG form actually so I've not had a chance up until now to really get a good close look at the BSK 
Um, but um, it is a lovely model. And it's interesting to know, again, that this is not a railroad representation of this. We've got metal wheels throughout. All of the underframe detail is there. We've got the uh, NEM pockets with the slimline tension lock couplings. It's all nicely done. The lining is there in full. It's not been simplified or cheapened in any way. And we've also got the Hogwarts Railways crest again on the side of the coach. And it is so nicely done. In terms of other things, well, the detail on these coaches, a lot of it is moulded on. And this was designed clever, done properly. And, you know, I've been a big advocate that if... If moulded on detail doesn't detract, then actually that's a really good route to take to try and keep the costs down. And these handrails actually are none the worse for being moulded on detail because they're nicely finished with the tampo printing to look like they're metal. And actually that is a really, really good use of Design Clever to keep down the cost of these models. One area though where this coach is kind of starting to let the side down ever so slightly in my view is the coach running number. There's just something slightly, I don't know, oversized or fuzzy about that. I think the yellow is perhaps just a little bit too thick. That said, it could actually be an accurate representation from the film, but in model form it just doesn't quite look right to me. It's not atrocious in any way, far from it, but there's just something about the finish on that number which doesn't quite uh, work for me. In other areas, the roof detail, again, we have moulded on detail, but it doesn't detract from the actual finish in the coach. It, it's really, really well done, and it's not something that I think marks the coach down at all. It's just really well done. All the torpedo vents, again, pretty crisp on there. And the, the rib detail, it's something that we've talked about before in reviews of coaches from other manufacturers, that whilst British Rail was very, very proud of their flush riveting and the fact that the seams weren't all that obvious on the real coaches, when other manufacturers have tried producing these without the seams, they don't look quite right. So it's almost like the eye expects something in model form that is a bit different from actually what the real world has. So it's nice here that I guess Hornby have come up with something of a compromise. You can see the ribs, but they're not overly prominent. So I think it all works quite well as a package. The second coach, it's a SK, so that second corridor coach. We've got again, the full proper interior, flush glazing windows. It's everything that you would expect from this fine model from Hornby. Metal wheels, full under frame. And um, I have to say again, the lining application is just absolutely fine. The Hogwarts Express logo, again, really good. The only deficiency for me, if I turn that around, is the, the numbering. It's a little bit on the fuzzy side, um, but apart from that, everything else is absolutely fine. And these coaches do look the part, even amongst the full super detail range of Mark I coaches that Hornby do. Overall, to bring back in the other items, I think what we've got here is an absolutely fine set. Dare I say the cliche, this is a magic set. And this will be a fine addition to the uh, Christmas stocking of novices who are new to the hobby and old hands too, who are looking for something to be able to uh, entertain younger children on, you know, daddy's model railway, granddad's model railway, or even Auntie Jenny's model railway, which I dare say, this is going to become pride of place when uh, I've got uh, nieces and nephews visiting. It's also fair to say that this set will also appeal to hardcore fans of the Harry Potter franchise. So there is an awful lot of scope to be able to pick one of these up as a Christmas present for a whole host of people. And I don't think any of them are going to be disappointed with what's on offer in this Hornby set. So marks out of 10. For me, this is actually a bit of a sleeper hit. The locomotive is a full fat, absolutely all singing, all dancing hall class of the kind of quality that we expect from the super detail range. And the coaches too are pretty good offerings with the, the full slimline tension lock couplings. There is nothing not to like. The only detractions for me have been really 
the lettering on the coaches is a little bit fuzzy for the numbers at least and in the locomotive there's no uh, picking out of that back head detail in the cab but these are fairly minor detractions and I think it still goes to show that this set is worthy of a good nine to a nine and a half out of ten and I'm sure that the younger audience that this is uh, aimed squarely at will overlook any of those minor faults and indeed for me it's still a really fine set. Hopefully this is going to be quite an easy DCC fit. It's got a standard uh, chip socket in the tender somewhere. You can see there the wires across. So I'm going to open it up and just see how easy this is to DCC chip. So a couple of screws, one, two, and that releases the tender top. Just leave that out. And you can see in here, we've got space for a DCC sound chip. So a TTS sound chip will fit quite readily into this. But today, I'm just going to fit it with a regular DCC chip. So let's remove the blanking plate and add in a standard 8-pin decoder. And what we're going to do is we're just going to tuck the wiring where the uh, speaker socket is just to keep everything nice and neat. And there we have it, DCC fitted. So I'm just gonna check that the uh, Chip's working okay, so program track, read, we can hear the locomotive uh, being read, it should come up as 2447, 2447, and that's just the number of the locomotive that I borrowed this chip from, just to check this out. So, now that we've verified that, what I'm going to do is put this on the track and uh, I was interested to see whether this light on the front could be controlled from the chip but the fact it's come straight on I'm not sure so let's just select this locomotive 2447 enter and I'm pressing the lighting button on and off and it's not changing that light in the front let's try f1 f2 now it appears that that light um, is not controllable from the chip So control on DCC is nice and smooth, just as we would expect with these uh, super detail Hornby locomotives. So yeah, it passes the test and I'm really pleased with that. The only detraction for me, I guess, is this light on the front. It would have been nice if that would have been uh, done in the same way that the lighting on Hornby's diesel locomotives are. But it is something that uh, a keen modeler with uh, a rudimentary understanding of the electronics of the DCC chip could easily wire that light to one of the auxiliary functions on the chip and make it work from the, um, the actual function buttons. But it's only a minor detraction. And for me, actually, I think this locomotive is going to give um, an awful lot of fun to the younger audience that it's aimed at. Well, I hope that that was informative to you and that you enjoyed watching that. Don't forget to tickle that like button and really importantly, don't forget to share as well. Let other people know about this video. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take really good care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you back here again next time. Bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson. Michael Churchwood, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, and oorail.co.uk. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk.
Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Nobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.